the Welsh Ryan Arena at Northwestern University. We're just a taste north of Chicago. Ken Stout with you, Mark Masary alongside, and we are going to bring you the American Airlines 43rd Annual Midlands Wrestling Tournament. Mark Masary, a former champion here at the Midlands. Nice to have you back in the booth with me once again. A very prestigious event. We have some names that are coming back in the finals that we've seen in previous years. We also have some new names. So we're going to crown some new champions before it's all over with. But the man that got everything started for us was our Grand Marshal, and that's Kyle Maynard. Uh, Kyle's an amazing young man. He's about 20 years old, wrestling down at University of Georgia, and he has a book out entitled No Excuses. And I tell you what, he's a motivational speaker, and when he talks to people in general, or specifically, we I've seen him talk to inner city kids, when he talks about getting the job done and making the most of your life, no excuses, what a role model. No better example. The man that's going to be covering all the action for us, Matt's side, will be John Fuller. Let's check in with you. Thanks, Ken and Mark. I'm standing here on the floor of Welsh Ryan Arena, where in just a few moments, 20 of the nation's top wrestlers are going to vie for the title of Midlands champions. Four of those wrestlers are looking to repeat as champions this year, including Jake Herbert and Mark Perry. Herbert from Northwestern looking to become the first Wildcat wrestler ever to win two Midlands titles. Perry? Moved up in weight class this year, and all the wrestling fans across the country have been looking forward to this matchup. Illinois leads a tight team race over Central Michigan by one point. And they have four in the finals. Let's see what happens. Our first class will be the 125-pound class, Nick Simmons and Pat Castillo, the two finalists. Well, I just, you know, basically go out there one match at a time, you know. I go out there, all right, I'm going to go deal with this guy, you know. Then I worry about whoever I get next, you know. Don't look too far in front of things. Go out there and do my thing, you know, I mean, I don't get scored on and I can't lose, so that's basically the mindset. Uh, hopefully a lot of teams see that Northern Illinois is an up-and-coming program now. Uh, last year here, we I was always seeing it. We were at the Midlands last year. We had one guy place, and now I think we got about six or seven guys placing, and it's a real big turnaround for us. Got new coaches and just the way we practice, and it's just big for Northern Illinois now, and I think it's more big things to come for us in the next couple of years. All right, here we go. Mark and the men are out there in the center of the mat. This is when it all starts here. Of course, these guys have been wrestling now for a number of matches to make it to this point. But Nick Simmons, what a standout this guy's turned out to be and a lot of success here at the Midlands. Yeah, there's really two stories going on in this match. One is Simmons hasn't been scored on yet this tournament, nor was he scored on last year at this tournament when he won his first championship. So when he said earlier about... If you can't, if you don't get scored on, you can't lose. <laughs> he's right on target there. He's just, he's had an amazing Midlands runs. There's his first takedown for two points, and we'll see what happens with his opponent. Another look at it right here. Here's the American Airlines replay, and it basically shows him he was in on the legs, and he's he used that length to re get to the other leg and finish it up for two. You know, we say this every year as, we, as you watch these competitors, but it's amazing what their joints are capable of doing, especially the smaller guys or the lower weight classes. I mean, for a knee to twist that way, it's just not natural. <laughs> yeah, my knees used to get sore when they got twisted that way, and now they get sore just watching this stuff. <laughs> but not... That's a, he's, he's really using his, both his skill and his length here on this back points. It doesn't look like there should be back points when that action starts, but with that length, he keeps some leverage down to his back instead of rolling through, and there he just got, he just got three points. Pat Castillo out of Northern Illinois, sophomore there, barely broke into the Illinois lineup, and certainly is a surprise finalist here. He also defeated Luke Eustace, and the quarter's coming up to the finals, so that was a pretty big match for him. Yeah, he's definitely exceeded himself here as far as the seed goes. He was seeded number seven. He beat the sixth seed in the semi, so that wasn't a major upset. But the quarters, as you mentioned, was huge for him. That was a big, big win for him. And here's Simmons again using that length and using his using his turns for another three points. But this, this match is uh, closing in on getting out of hand already with as few points, meaning zero, that Simmons has given up this tournament, it's going to be very difficult to come back from an 8-0 to zero deficit. Well, once again, we'll start off here now. We've already started in the neutral position, even though we're still in the first period here. A wrestler will start in the down position with another, obviously, on top. Well, it's pretty obvious what Castillo has to do. All he has to do is score more points in the next four minutes than the last nine Midlands opponents have that Simmons has wrestled. Pretty 
Pretty tall order, huh? <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be tough. I, the, the way he controls people with the, his length and strength is just amazing. And you constantly bring that up. Talk to me about the advantage of having that length. Well, th the issue with the length is that you can be on all all four sides of the guy at one time. I mean, you most wrestlers, you're you're on top and on the side, or you're on the other side, or you're, you've got a leg. With that length, he's everywhere at the same time, and he's not weak. You know, if he was if he was long and weak, at least you've got something to go against. But uh, he's tough, and he's he's a man right now. Just starting the second of our three regulation periods here, and Nick Simmons certainly controlling him here, representing Michigan State, looking for his second Midlands championship. Record coming in 11 and 1, only has one loss here in his first year at the Midlands. So, without a doubt, has uh, has done an awesome job here. Placed fourth at the NCAA tournament last season, All American. He is uh, definitely at the top of his game. Yeah, he's one of those few kids that goes through his entire high school season or his entire high school career without ever losing a match over four years. So he came to Michigan State with a, a lot of credentials on his plate, and he's done very well for them. Now, 211 matches, unanswered matches in high school with 178 of them being pins. <laughs> That's pretty phenomenal. Well, it's, it's astounding, and... Uh, even more astounding is that his younger, bigger brother, a couple of weight classes up, did the same thing. He went through high school undefeated. So their dad, who wrestled at Michigan State a number of years ago, set that table up pretty well with those two young men. Majors of business management. And Nick Simmons definitely controlling this match here. Yeah, if I was Mr. Castillo underneath, this is this is not where I would have wanted to have started this period underneath this guy who nobody gets away from and he turns people left and right. This was this was not a good place to be for this second period. Trying to break free here, just not able to do so, Mark. Yep, here's another one of those near falls that he gets from all kinds of odd positions, and boy, it's just tough being underneath this guy. Trying to break away here, you know, if he could just get the escape, at least he would earn one point, something nobody else has been able to do. Actually, that would be, again, uh, Castillo is a young wrestler. He's a freshman at Illinois, and for him, as you say, to even score a couple of points where no, that nobody else has been able to do would be a nice accomplishment because nobody would expect him to be able to beat Simmons in this match. And the fact that he got here is just a, a terrific job for him. So you're right. That, that would be a positive step in his career right now. The second period coming to a close here with just a couple of seconds left, and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to earn that point just yet. We'll go into our third period, and we'll see if Pat can come up with at least one or two points here, and it looks like they will start off in the neutral position, Mark. Yeah, I think that's smart. If that was Castillo's decision, I think that's smart not to go back onto the mat with him. Simmons is going to be going after him, though, because he's just a few points away from a, a technical fall. Now, Simmons likes to pin people anyway, but even a technical fall will be good for the team points for Michigan State, who's, who's in third place right now team-wise, so he'd like to score as many extra points as he can for his team. Technical fall is once you get ahead of a wrestler by 15 or more points, they'll actually end the match. Now, if you've got the opponent on his back when you get those points, they do let the match go on, so you can attempt to get the fall. But once the wrestler gets off his back and that 15-point differential exists, then the match is over. Pat took a shot early on, definitely went for it, no question, but was not able to get those takedown points. Nick Simmons, again, showing that length, reached that left leg all the way around and was able to get back behind him and put a couple more points on the board. Yeah, Simmons is doing a heck of a job here, but I tell you what, you really have to appreciate the hustle that Castillo is showing. That Northern Illinois Husky, you know, he had, a, he had a good high school career, not obviously what Simmons had with undefeated four years, but he had a good high school career, and the Northern Illinois staff is doing a good job getting him ready. Just a little less than one minute left in the final period here, and Nick Simmons just absolutely dominating here. Pat Castillo with a great run in his first Midlands attempt as he makes it to the championship round. But Nick Simmons looks like he's going to prove to be too tough to tame here as he chases his second championship. Oh, I believe he's got that cradle locked. I tell you what, he wants that, he wants that last near fall so he can get his 15-point technical fall. He's got the hands locked. I don't, know if, I don't know if Castillo can keep him from taking him over or not. 
He's got 20 seconds to fight it off here. Not getting technical fault, I think, would be a terrific accomplishment for this young man. Nick Simmons still working very hard. Oh, man, that length. That's just amazing. I did, oh, and they scored the fall to boot. With four seconds left in the match, he scored an actual fall, not just the technical fall, for his second straight championship. And what a shame for Pat Castillo. You can see the frustration there as he tried to hold him off. Here's a great look at the coaches here, courtesy of our American Airlines replay. And you can see the enthusiasm there with them as well. Let's send it down to Joe. Nick didn't give up a single point in this tournament. Five matches, three pins. How did you dominate so well? Just go out there, do my thing, you know. One point at a time. Like I was saying earlier, one point at a time, then whatever happens, happens. If no one scores on me, that's great, but I won, so that's all that matters. His record will go to 16 and 1 here at the Midlands. When we come back, we'll go to the next weight class, weight 133. As you watch the cold waters of Lake Michigan wash up onto the sandy shores there, we are just a few blocks away from Northwestern University there as you look at Lake Michigan. We'll bring you though to the stadium. We had a chance to talk to our competitors in the 133 weight class. You know, I'm just going to have to find ways to pick them apart, you know, stay to my game plan, work on the feet keep my motion good uh, anything that I can do to just basically find an advantage it's probably the best option for me when I'd say uh, making it into those finals here at the Midlands I'd be my biggest accomplishment so far last year I guess was making the NCAAs and picking up a couple matches but coming in here knocking off a couple of the high-ranked guys is I guess this would be you know my biggest and here we are at the start of the 133 pound class Wrestlers shake hands as always. The start of the two-minute first period, and right off the bat, they get pretty busy here, Mark. Yeah, this is nice action getting right off the bat here. The Iowa State wrestler didn't waste any time getting a nice shot off. And the Cal State Bakersfield wrestler in blue, he's a very quick wrestler, but the Iowa State, the Iowa State wrestler got a hold of him, and he got in there. Jesse Sundell representing Iowa State senior with a math education major competed in the ncaa match last year and won two matches excellent job there but i guess you would call him an upset finalist here beat the number two seed on the way to the finals well actually both of these finalists are are upset finalists because th this is a rarity you've got a uh, the iowa state wrestler seated number seven and he had to upset two guys seated higher than him to make it tom vargas from cal state bakersfield he wasn't seated at all, and he had to upset three re seated wrestlers to get to the finals, and he's done a fine job. He's a graduate student, so he's a little wily, but he's got good quickness and good technique. Excellent job for him. Definitely did a great job. It'll be interesting to see how these two guys go at each other because the, the Iowa State wrestler is a little bit younger, but as you saw to begin with, he, he took off. He got right after him on that leg shot to pick up the first takedown. So a lot of action right off the bat now. A little more cautious between the two competitors. Yeah, as I say, Varga, Vargas has good technique, but he's he sets his moves up. Oh, boy, that was a nice shot. That was a nice move off the head. He he sets things up a little bit more carefully than the Iowa State wrestler. He went The Iowa State wrestler went right after him. Vargas set that up a little bit more carefully, and that was a nice takedown. So Tommy Vargas had one year of eligibility left and exercised that, obviously, out here doing a great job. And now has some points up on the board. That was a very nice finish. The Iowa State wrestler had that whizzer, and Vargas limp-armed that out, came up on top. Well, we're seeing a little bit of the same action. Vargas needs to be careful here that he doesn't accidentally pin himself. But what we just saw for a near-fall attempt was the same thing that we saw in the prior match with Simmons. Simmons is a lot longer, and he hangs guys up there, but Vargas had the same opportunity and got those near-fall points. So once again, they'll go outside of the wrestling area. Here it is. He takes them over to the back. He's got that half in from the far side, and right there, the ref starts to call some back points because he stopped his action while he's on his back. Boy, oh, so close. It can go either way at that point very, very quickly. Now, that was a nice job. At that point, he just needed to make sure he didn't get his own two shoulder blades flat to the mat. So good action here. We'll start off our second period. The Cal State Bakersfield wrestler on top. That's Tommy Vargas. Yeah, Tommy came in unseated. 
hadn't wrestled collegiately for a couple of years, and now he's getting that last year of eligibility in with his graduate student here. Real good high school wrestler. Highly warranted uh, wrestler coming out of high school and uh, finally exercising on some of those abilities here. Yeah, he's a great kid, and it's good to see him having some success. He had to beat the number eight seed in the first round. Then in the third round, he had to beat the number one seed, and in the fourth round, he had to beat the number four seed. So he's definitely earned his way here into these finals. Great effort for him. Certainly the best of his college or post-college career, if you will. Yeah, if we get another shot of the corner in this match, oh, boy, that was a, that was a nice sit-out attempt, but Vargas countered it well. I thought the Iowa State wrestler was going to get that reversal, but Vargas countered it well. We might see it during the course of this match another corner shot of the coach's corner for Iowa State, and they, they've got Cale Sanderson, the Olympic champion, sitting over there who's an assistant coach at Iowa State now. Nothing like getting some tips from him. <laughs> yeah. Man definitely knows his way around a wrestling mat. Yeah, he's been helping out there as assistant coach for a couple of years now since he graduated, and I'm, I'm sure he's good, excellent for that program, and who knows, uh, given a few more years, maybe he, maybe he takes over there, but I don't want to rush the existing coach out because he's doing a good job. And Vargas with that leg up high, but not able to capture those takedown points just yet. Now, they're warning Vargas for stalling there because he's down on the leg, and you're only allowed to stay down on that leg for so long. If, if you're on top and you come down to uh, one leg with your arms wrapped around it, it's your responsibility to move back up to the body, and he stayed down on that leg a little too long. Once again, we are in our second period, about 30 seconds left in the second of three periods here. The weight class, 133 pounds. If Vargas needs to be careful because when you're on top, it's your responsibility to be putting that guy down to the mat or working for a fall. And I think at that point, he decided to let him cut him loose for a one-point escape rather than risk getting hit for another caution or, or, or stalling call. And Jesse obviously earning a escape point there. We'll close it up just a little bit within two points. A takedown here on Vargas could tie this match up. Another look. Yeah, here's that here's that switch that I thought the Iowa State wrestler was going to score with, but Vargas did a, a nice job of coming all the way over the top of it to keep that from happening. So physically demanding. I know a lot of our hardcore wrestling fans out there watching understand how tough this sport is. For the fans out there that are just watching possibly for the first time or maybe do not understand everything that goes on here, I don't know if you can find a more physically demanding sport than what we're watching. Yeah, I think the best explanation, and I know I've told this in the past to uh, friends, but the best explanation is in the, when you're wrestling an eight-minute match, you're putting out about seven minutes of intense work in that eight-minute period, eight-minute match. Maybe eight minutes, but at least seven. During a football game, if you start a, a stopwatch, during two and a half or three hours, you're also putting out about seven or eight minutes of effort. But it's spread out over three hours rather than, rather than eight or ten minutes. So it is very demanding. All right, nice effort here. I tell you, both guys working very hard here. Extremely hard for Tommy Vargas having a good match. Jesse gets another escape point. You can see the points here escalating for both competitors as we go to eight to four. Well, we've got one minute left, and Iowa State's got their work cut out for him. He's four points down, so he's going to need a bunch of takedowns, or he's going to have to take him down and catch Vargas on his back somehow, Doug because I don't think he's going to have enough time just to score, just to come back four points with take, nothing but takedowns. Oh, the referee just called Vargas for stalling. That's the second warning, so that's a point for Sundell. That's a big difference, because now Sundell can tie this match up with two takedowns. Boy, that was a terrific drag out of there. I thought Vargas was going to be able to waste some time, and he dragged out for that takedown. And Vargas able to earn one more escape point there. I'll tell you, Jesse Sundell within one point there pretty quickly. Yeah, that was a real nice shot. American Airlines replay here showing you the battle on the mat as they are going at it here with just 10 seconds left in the final period. Sundell needs a takedown with time expiring to tie this up and send it into overtime. And Vargas is keeping him tied up. He's not going to get it. The win will go to Tommy Vargas, representing California State Bakersfield, an unseated wrestler coming into the Midlands and wins it all. That doesn't happen often, and that was just an excellent job.
Here's one of his back points from earlier in the match that put him into the driver's seat. What a job. Nice job. Let's send it over. To Tommy, got a little close there at the end for you. What was running through your mind in the last 30 seconds? Just, you know, maintain good, good position. I knew he was tough. Stay on my side, stay working, trying to get some shots off. You know, I got a little close to the end there, but I luckily pulled it off, so I'm good, happy for that. When we come back, we'll take it up a notch to the 141-pounders. Welcome back once again to the 43rd annual Midlands Wrestling Tournament here at Northwestern University. We finished with our first two classes. We're now going into the 141-pounders. Class, and we have two veterans coming back here. In fact, the finals that we saw a year ago. What are we going to expect in that? Uh, hopefully another exciting match. I know he's going to be wrestling hard. I'm going to be wrestling hard, and hopefully I can get some revenge. He can be dangerous. Um, you know, he's got, got a couple big moves, pretty tough on top. So I'm just trying to score my points early, not, you know, not take any chances, letting it go into overtime or whatnot. So. Here we go, the 141-pound weight class, and we'll start this one off in the third period. Nate Gallick with one point underneath his belt so far, and it looks like Nate will start on top here in this third period. Yeah, for, no, for very few points being scored, this has been a heck of a match so far. Nothing scored in the first period with a lot of close calls. Second period, Simmons ride Gallick's, rides Gallick out the whole period. However, he was called for a semi-controversial stalling call in there, so that's how Gallic got his one point, even though he never escaped. These two guys have wrestled so tough over the years, and in fact, it's Andy Simmons who has yet to beat Nate. Nate able to stay just ahead of him, but I'll tell you, number one, number two coming in here. These guys also wrestled in the NCAAs. They wrestled each other in the semifinals. Nate was able to win there and eventually run it up at the NCAAs and lost an overtime match. Okay, well that gives Simmons his escape point, so now it's tied one to one. We'll see what happens. They, neither guy's been able to score a takedown yet, but they're just, not only are they both tough competitors, but they've wrestled each other enough now that it's hard for either to score on the other guy. As a freshman, Andy Simmons was named the team's most outstanding wrestler. He was an NCAA qualifier as well, and one match away from being an All-American in high school. Just like his brother, he went undefeated as well, 219-0. and 0. So very accomplished, talented athletes, both of these guys. Well, we've got a minute to finish it out here. They've, they've wrestled some overtime bouts in the past, but with any luck, one of these two guys gets a takedown and <laughs> takes care of it in regulation. And you know, when you face off against somebody like this, you have to be very cautious. You know you're against somebody that is equally as impressive as you are. Well, they're, they're both they're both good offensively, and they're both good counter wrestlers. They're they're tough to finish moves on, and they're good from the oh, but that well, that was a, a start of good shot, but he just, that head just got too low. I don't know if Simmons is going to be able to come out of there for with, with anything productive. But yeah, they're they're both they're both good wrestlers, both on their feet, both counters, and you know that that makes you cautious. Twenty seconds left here in the match. We are tied up one to one. The same two competitors we saw in the finals a year ago, and you can see these guys are pretty equal. Well, it looks to me like they're going to dance the last last nine seconds and see what overtime brings. Four seconds counting down, and that will end the third and final period here for the 141-pounders. We will go into overtime, and let's explain that a little bit, Mark. Yeah, the overtime situation is a little bit convoluted, but here it goes. First is a one-minute period on their feet. This is sudden victory. Either wrestler scores, the match is over. It doesn't matter if it's a takedown or a penalty point or stalling or what have you. Any point that's scored ends the match. If neither wrestler scores in this first one minute overtime period, then they go to two 30 second periods with one wrestler under the first one and one, the other wrestler under the other one. Both 30 seconds gets wrestled in their entirety. It is not sudden victory. So this minute, which we're now wrapping down to the 25 second mark, this is sudden victory. The next two 30 second periods on the mat are not. So a critical minute here, either one of them scoring would end it as we watch. If they can't score a point here in the next 15 seconds, it will go to the other 30-second periods. Yeah, my guess is, considering that Simmons rode Gallic out for two minutes in the regulation, 
My guess is he's going to be cautious here and take it down to the mat, because so far he rode Gallic out and he escaped from Gallic. So I think he's got to figure he's got a little bit of an edge down there. So the first minute, no points are scored here. We'll go back and take a look at this American Airlines replay. Here's the escape, the only action point of the match since Gallic's point came on a stalling call. And that is what tied the match up and sent us into overtime. This will be a 30-second period. Simmons is going to have 30 seconds to get away, and Gallic, his number one job is just to stay on top of him or behind him. Oh, boy, he's got that leg. I, I, don't, I don't see where... Oh, man, that could be some back points. No, the ref does not give a reversal. No reversal, no back points. Boy, that was close. That was... I tell you what, that could have been that could have been called a reversal with back points, but as it was, they, they did give Simmons the escape point, so he does he does get his one point for the escape. Boy, there's another. Oh man, he's there again. No, they waved it off. Oh my gosh, I thought for sure they gave him the takedown. They waved it. They're waving it off. They're talking about it right here. He hits the corner right there. He hits the corner. They don't give the takedown. I thought they did. I thought they were going to start waving back points. He's trying to give points. He he scored with the, the right hand. He scored two for the takedown and then waved it off when he looked at the other ref. Wow. And the refs effectively conversing with each other, pulling those two points back. It'll keep us in a tie. We'll go into another 30-second period. All right. They're going to caution one of these two wrestlers for jumping on the whistle. Looks like that would be Nate. Well, either that or the ref's just saying, hey, guys, my bad. I, I don't know what the ref's telling him. I don't know if he cautioned one of them or if he just said, my fault, let's start over. Okay, Simmons has 30 seconds to ride for the win here. He's got the 2-1 to one lead right now. He needs to ride for 30, 24 more seconds, and he wins his first Midlands championship. Boy, he's got to be careful here that he is not giving up an escape right now, but he's got to be careful that his two shoulder blades don't go down because Gallup could get the fall without actually getting a reversal. Right now, there's six seconds left. Oh, my gosh. Boy, is that a reversal or an escape? Oh, oh gosh. Man, and the refs letting them wrestle oh, as much wow. as they possibly could. Wow. The Iowa State coaches want that to be called a reversal because that's for the win. The refs are going to talk about it. It's either an escape for a tie or a reversal for the win. What are they going to do? And what is the ruling for wrestling outside of the circle? I mean, they were so close. Oh, man. I tell you what, the refs, the refs did the conservative thing is that they called the escape and they're going to let it go to a second overtime period. Wow. I, boy, I tell you what, this match has been very difficult to officiate. You could, if you're wearing red, you can find all kinds of things wrong they've done. If you're wearing white and green, you can find things they've done wrong. So, so fair is fair. <laughs> well, the, yeah, it's kind of balanced out. And here they are going into, uh, going into the second overtime. So here we are again. On their feet, this is sudden victory. Either guy scores, match is over. Of course, we haven't seen anything in the first uh, eight or nine minutes to indicate that there's going to be a takedown here, but that's why they're wrestling it. Nate, who had such a great summer, placed second at the World Team Finals Trials. If he'd won it, it would have allowed him to compete in the World Championships in 2005, which is an awesome accomplishment for anybody still in college. Well, this is going to be a frustrating match for the loser because either one of these guys, if whichever loses, is going to be able to look back in the match and say, you know, the refs, the refs called it wrong here. But the fact is, the refs have called it, it's a tough match to ref, and they've called it real close, and they've cost both wrestlers probably some takedown points. So in balance, it's about where it belongs. Right here, he's got just a few seconds to stay on top. Gallic's only got about six or seven point seconds at this point. And instead of getting back points, he rolls all the way through. Boy, I don't know how he stayed off his back. That was tough. Right there now, you could call a reversal, but he gets that. Simmons got that wizard arm in just in time so that it turned it into an escape and not a reversal. So here we go, another 30 second period here. And they must wrestle that in its entirety. Okay, there's an escape for Simmons. He's going after two more. Oh, boy. He hit the corner. Did they call it a takedown or not? Yes, they did call a takedown. All Gallic has to do is stay on top. Oh, boy. 
What a match. What a match. Okay, we're going to go to the second, 30-second period. Here's another look at what happened. There's the escape. Simmons is trying to hit the corner. He's trying to hit the corner for another two. He did get the escape point. Gallic fought him off. And eventually got back around him and earned some points and took the lead. So as soon as one gets it, the other one counters and seems to take it back. Well, this is a real tough spot for Simmons right now because Gallic is not only underneath, but he also has a one-point lead because of that late takedown. So Simmons cuts him loose. That takes Gallic's lead from four to three up to five to three. And now there's nothing but nothing that has to happen for Simmons except for a takedown. He has to go after a takedown. He cannot wrestle conservatively at this point. And Gallic, of course, can wrestle very conservatively. He can keep backing up. He can take a, he can take a stalling call, for that matter. Just a little over five seconds left in this overtime match. Second overtime, I should say. Wow. What a tough fought bout. Nine tough minutes separated by a couple of points that could have gone either way about five different times in this match. Neither wrestler doing anything wrong. What an incredibly tough match. Nate will keep his perfect record over Andy Simmons. As you watch the Air American Airlines replay here, let's send it down to John with our winner. Two years in a row now, you've been able to beat Andy Simmons in the finals, both of them hard fought. Tell us about this match out here tonight. It's uh, real uh, controversial. I wasn't how I wanted to win. Uh, I mean, a win's a win, but you know, kind of disappointed him with the way I wrestled. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's all I can say. I mean, it's tough. And, you know, it was a battle. When we come back, we'll go to the 149-pound weight class. Cliff once again, back here at Northwestern University, the Midlands Wrestling Tournament is overwatching the 43rd running of that as you look at the cold waters of Lake Michigan. It'll be Cliff Moore representing the Hawkeye Training Club and Mark DeSalvo from Central Michigan. I'm just going to come in the match with the same attitude I've had uh, all season long. I'm just um, going to try to get better. I'm going to try to stay offensive. I'm not a guy to know who I'm wrestling next. Usually, you know, a coach asked me who I had next, and I said, I don't know. So I don't really look at the brackets. I just get ready myself, you know. It seems to work the best for me. As the wrestlers shake hands here, we'll start off the first period. Two minutes up on the clock, and two tough wrestlers here. Cliff Moore, a strength and conditioning coach at the University of Iowa. In 04, he won the NCAA title in the 141-pound weight class, so has stepped up here. He is also a three-time NCAA All-American, a two-time Big Ten champion. But he didn't have to cut as much weight here. He'll be able to bring a little more strength and power to the mat. Well, that was a real nice head shot on top. DeSalvo got that first takedown. That was a beautiful shot. But Cliff Moore didn't waste any time getting out of there. Yeah, it's generally the post-collegiate wrestlers are not going to be bringing their weight down quite the same way or to the same extent as the collegiate wrestlers are. So it makes sense that uh, we see them up a weight or so. Mark DeSalvo representing Central Michigan. Also, a very tough wrestler here. Placed eighth at the NCAA tournament in 05. This is, uh, the seeding guys have done a good job here. This is our second match in a row with the number one and the number two seeds in the finals. So, last weight class in here, they're, the seeding guys did their job. Tell you, DeSalvo, he looks a little more active and a little bit quicker here. I was considering that Moore is wrestling up a weight. I thought we might see him as, a, as the quicker wrestler, but DeSalvo is showing some nice speed here. And DeSalvo, kind of a unique career, if you will, starting off at Central Michigan where he redshirted, then went to TMI, eventually came back to Central Michigan. He's battled some knee injuries, but appears to be very healthy here this week. Once again, the two guys locking horns. Nobody with any takedown points just yet. Well, they just, they just warned Red for stalling them. The Iowa Hawkeye, or the ex-Hawkeye, I should say, just got warned for stalling. The, the, the guy pressing the activity has been DeSalvo, so I got to hand it to him. That's probably a good call. Right, winding down the first period here with DeSalvo on a two-to-one lead. We have a replay here of that takedown. It was real nice because Moore was pressing in. DeSalvo did a real nice job of popping that head by and hitting the corner. Good action.
action here thanks to American Airlines. Nice replay there, and we'll go into the second period. DeSalvo has chosen to start the second period down, and he obviously is going to want to get an escape and start adding to that lead. That was smart of Moore just to cut him loose. Once these post-collegians get out of the day-to-day -day grind of wrestling on the mat, because the freestyle is so much different in that respect, once they get out of that day-to-day -day grind, they don't really like to spend a whole lot of time trying to ride guys. So they'll generally cut them loose if they can't turn them. But Moore is uh, going to have to pick up the pace now because he's on. He's two points down. He's going to have to pick up the pace on his feet. He got one for stalling in the first period. He's going to have to start pressing the action a little bit here, I imagine. Is there any intimidation to a, a wrestler that's still in college going against a post-college athlete? Well, I, I think there can be, but... I don't know that I sense that here, but really, I don't think the intimidation is so much collegiate or post-collegiate. It's <laughs> how, tough, how tough is that guy on the other side of the circle from you? Well, and how quick was that? Well, that was a, that was a nice uh, shot and, and reaction. Oh, that was an excellent counter shot by Moore. He stepped across from behind and really caught DeSalvo flat-footed. That was a real nice counter. And they'll tie it up three to three. Right here, he's got the underhook, he takes that leg, steps across, and takes the arm out. Okay, we've got a tied match here with a minute to go. DeSalvo certainly wants to salvage the second period with another escape. Okay, there it's going. It, like I say, generally don't see too much riding by the post-collegiate guys. And Cliff Moore will have to go back to work here. Cliff Moore will have his choice to start the third period. My guess is he'll start under. I still think he's wrestling with those college boys enough to know how to get out from underneath. And Cliff Moore in the red singlet, by the way. The salvo in the maroon. Now there's time for one more takedown if either guy will go after it. But after that initial flurry, things have calmed down a little bit. And it looks like we will go to our third period here with DeSalvo in the lead by one point. Once again, another look here courtesy of American Airlines. Here's that last escape point scored by DeSalvo. And we start the third period with DeSalvo on top this time. Moore does have his choice. He did take down. He's going to work for that escape point to tie the match up and then go from there. Standing up and does break free. He will get that escape point. All tied up at 4-4 four to four in our 149-pound weight class, and we are in our third and final period. Well, if Moore's been pacing himself a little bit so he had energy for the third period, he's done a good job because he's coming in tied. And DeSalvo, we haven't seen too much out of him on the feet uh, after that first period. He had two nice shucks, one of which scored, tried another one there. Looks like Moore's getting a little bit stronger. Moore hanging on there pretty tightly. Both of those guys looking for a counter move, obviously, or an opening to take that shot, and there's one. Nice shot, nice counter on Moore's part. Yeah, the, the pace has definitely slowed down here a little bit. I thought we might see more of the first action, first period action. It's so tough to get that takedown. You know, when you see them, you, you, you have to just garnish those two points because they come few and far in between at this level. Oh, uh, that was that was the start of a nice shot, but he really he lost his base. He got overextended and Moore did a nice job circling around behind. The coach is definitely into it. This is a heck of a battle because that was a nice counter by Moore. He's still trying to get that takedown. There it is. That's the two. Moore just literally lifting him completely off the mat. Boy, that was an excellent job for both guys because DeSalvo lost his balance underneath. Moore countered, should have had the takedown 20 seconds earlier, and DeSalvo fought out of it. He, they both did a great job, but Moore finally finished it up with about 15 seconds left in the match. Nice job on Moore's part to finish that takedown. Boy, do those guys go at it. Congratulations to the number one seed, Cliff Moore. will stay just ahead of Mark DeSilvo, the number two seed. So congratulations. One more look at it here, courtesy of our Feldmeyer replay.
DeSalvo did a good job fighting this off earlier, but Moore finally comes down with it. How were you able to slow his attack down after falling behind early? Uh, I wasn't slowing him down, just getting my stuff going. Uh, you know, you just get, you get your tie-ups, and everybody's different. You know, you take what you take what tie-up they give you, and you just gotta use that. Next up will be the 157-pounders, Alex Terrapelli, one of the best in the business. Come back once again to the men's wrestling tournament here at Northwestern University. Our next class will feature the 157-pound competitors, but before we go there, we're going to spend a little time with Kyle Maynard. I've been involved in wrestling for about nine years now. You throw in a half here, I just wing that down and hip over. I think the, the wrestling mat is just an equalizer for anybody because you don't have to be the best athlete in the world to be able to compete and do well. If you've got the heart and the desire to go out and win, then you will. Kyle Maynard, uh, what an inspiration. I was uh, taken by him and his personality and his approach to things. Just a wonderful young guy. This morning he met with uh, 200 grade school wrestlers, our Beat the Streets program. And they were in awe. Can I just get up here and elevate and throw it up? I uh, personally believe that everybody has some type of a disability, whether it's emotional, physical, um, psychological. It's just uh, a matter of um, whether or not you've got the strength and will to overcome that. I was 11 years old and lost in the first 35 matches I ever competed in. and. Uh, it was a very, very tough, tough period for me. My parents wouldn't allow me to quit in the middle of the season. But the entire time, I had to have that no excuses mentality. Just like each one of you guys here today can have that no excuses mentality. You tell yourself today that you're not gonna make excuses for reasons why you're gonna give up and quit, not just in wrestling, but in life. Maybe people kind of lose sight sometimes of uh, just on the mat. And, uh, and the fact that, yeah, I, you know, I like going out and trying to spread the message about the sport and all that, but I'm really, truly a competitor, and I love being on the mat, and I really just enjoy punishing people. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. It's what I grew up doing. It's uh, hopefully what, you know, my kids will grow up doing, hopefully going to get involved in coaching some other kids to, to go out there and wrestle. And, you know, and I just can't, can't say enough about the sport and the things it's done for my life. What a success story and what an inspiration. Now it's time for the 157-pounders. I, I, I think he's going to wrestle like he always does wrestle to win. I think he's going to wrestle smart and not, not give me a lot of opportunities. And I'm going to try and create a lot of opportunities and put a lot of points on the board because that's how I know I'm going to do my best. So. Johnson and I are both guys that, you know, every time we step on the mat, you know, whether it's you know, preseason open tournament or NCAA tournament, I mean, we want to win. I mean, it's, for me, what's more important is at the end of the season, I mean, Big Ten NCAA tournament is most important. But still, every time we step on the mat, we're both going to try and win. Alex Terrapelli, also our defending champion in this weight class from last year, going against the number two seed in Joe Johnston. We will start this match off in our second period as we went scoreless through the first period, two minutes up on the clock. Yeah, as they talked about, they're both competitive. They've seen each other a few times. They know each other pretty well, having competed in Midlands and Big Tens and dual meets and nationals. Oh, that was a nice shot. Oh, gosh. That was a nice shot by Johnston, but an equally nice counter by Tirapelli. As I was saying, these guys, they really know each other very well. It's, it's just, it's tough for them to get in. Oh, beautiful shot. But that could have been, you know what? That could have been called... I was very close to being called a takedown because it only takes one point inbounds anymore to be considered inbounds. And Terrapelli had his hand inbounds as Johnson was coming around on him. They could have called that a takedown. Now, normally you think of the attacking wrestler as keeping one point inbounds, but in that case, it was actually Terrapelli that had the point inbounds. So, anyway, they called it no takedown, and here we are, still looking for our first points of the match. Alex Terrapelli in the blue singlet. One of the favorites to win the NCAA title, but lost in an early round to none other than Joe Johnston. Yeah, last year, Terrapelli was expected to win it, or certainly they expected him to be in the finals, and 
He scored that up. He had that upset loss to Johnston earlier in the NCAA match. Boy, they're, they're starting to go at it. The pace is definitely picking up here. Taking their shots, looking for some points here. Two guys that are not afraid to go at each other. Yeah, I think you can pretty much uh, flip a coin between these two guys. The, 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 seating, uh, the seating people did an excellent job in this tournament, not only, or in this weight class. Not only did they get the top two seeds here in the finals, but they had the top four seeds all made the semis, and the top eight seeds all made the quarterfinals. So this one's gone pretty close to form. And I tell you, one thing that's really changed in the last few years is the, the defense and countering that uh, is going on. It's really been just in the last maybe five to six years that the the the, pro the process of, of taking an ankle, taking a lower leg, pulling it over your head, making it difficult for these officials to call these two-point takedowns. This has really become an art form in these last few years. That you just didn't see this 10 years ago, and it's it's really made it tough uh, to finish a takedown and tough for the reps to know how to call. Boy, some tough positions here. Both wrestlers very, very active. Yeah, that, that leg in front that Tirapelli has caught in front, you know, it's, it's at some point in the past that, that wouldn't have happened, but it also might have just been called to take down. But they're, they're letting the guys have a little bit more time to get out of those things. Joe Johnston starting off here on top as we start off our third period. Yeah, in the second period, Johnston chose neutral rather than to go underneath because Tirapelli is really tough on top. Probably a smart decision, but Tirapelli gets his choice for this third period, and he does choose to go down. So he's got a little bit of advantage right now because if he scores his escape, he's got the only point of the match. Boy, Johnston is cranking on him. <laughs> he's boy, oh boy, man. Pull it on that All head. All right. Well, you know what? I think Johnston just decided I'm not going to ride him the whole period. Oh, boy. If he can finish this up, that's going to be a big point. Oh, and what a counter. Tirapelli winds up with the takedown. I think Johnston cut him loose figure, and I'm not going to ride him. I want as much time to take him down as possible, but it was Tirapelli that gets a great counter. Tirapelli looking for a little payback on Johnston. Johnston, the NCAA runner-up in 05. He really came to life after beating Tirapelli last year as they'll go out of the boundary there. He's always been a good regular season wrestler, but has stumbled in postseason. Looks like he might have gotten that monkey off his back. Also named Iowa's most dedicated wrestler and most valuable wrestler. Boy, that is prestigious award right there. Johnston did a fine job last year, and I tell you what, though, Tirapelli is really in control of this match now. It's going to be really difficult to make up a three-point deficit, especially with him on top, the way he can ride and chew up time. Once again, Tirapelli in the blue singlet. Johnston in the black, and Johnston fighting to get loose now to try and earn some points. He's got to find a way to get out from underneath th from Tirapelli's lap, and it's really tough in that position. Tirapelli's got a leg in on one side. He had the far shoulder hook. Now he's doing a, using cross faces. I mean, it's just, it's, it can be really brutal underneath there when you get a guy that knows what he's doing like Tirapelli. Less than 30 seconds left in the match. And you can see the grimace on the faces. If you think they aren't using every last ounce of strength in their bodies, you are absolutely mistaken. There's a lot of fast twitch fibers burning out right now. No question about it. Less than 10 seconds left. The final five seconds of the match here with the 157 pounders. And that's going to do it. Congratulations to Alex Terrapelli representing Illinois. Three to nothing over Joe Johnston. Another great match here. It all came down to that counter. Johnston made that shot with about a minute and a half left. Here we go. He makes that shot, and here comes. He, he knocks him off to the one hip and hits the corner coming around. Boy, what a nice job. Johnston seemed to have some pretty good leg attacks in the first two periods. How were you able to fend those off every time he got in? Uh, you know, he's real uh, stocky build, low to the ground, you know, so he pulls on you, gets you react, and then he's easy to get to your legs. You didn't have to... You know, change elevation a big deal. Whereas I'm longer, I have a little more leverage. So if I can stop him initially from finishing off a shot, then I have a good chance to score on his shot. Once again, welcome back to the Midlands Wrestling Tournament here at Northwestern University. Beautiful shot there. Ken Stout with you. Mark Masry sitting alongside. We've had some excellent matches. Pound class and two tough ones coming at you. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to be low on my stance because I know, I know he, he, he can shoot. I know he can shoot from the outside fast, so if I don't have my hands down, then I'm going to leave my legs open. So I'm going to have to go in there with my hands down and control the tie-ups and 
Usually when that happens, I win. So I, I know nothing about them, and, and, I'm, and I'm glad. I don't, when, I, when I study people, when I look into people, that, that's why I don't wrestle my best. I just want to go out there and wrestle the way I wrestle. I don't even care what he does. <laughs> It's kind of there unique. That's the second time we've heard that, Mark. And typically, an opponent will want to study another opponent, but these guys like to just go at them with nothing preconceived in their minds. Well, one of the nice things about wrestling is there's a lot of different ways to approach it, as well as a lot of different ways to, to hit even the same move, depending on your body type. And so it's the, it's the fun thing about the sport. Lots of different ways to get the same thing accomplished. Mike Poeta from Illinois. Hometown boy, if you will, typically wrestles 157 pounds, but Tirafelli took that spot for the team, so he bumped up a weight class. Two-time Illinois State champ at Highland Park High School, a suburb of Chicago, and his favorite athlete, none other than Lance Armstrong. Well, it's tough to argue with Lance Armstrong as a role model when it comes to working hard and preparing for your event. But here, oh, that's one of those quick shots he was talking about. Boehmer was a little bit worried about those quick outside shots, and boy, that's exactly what he hit on him. He's talking about not wanting to know too much about the other guy, just do his thing, and that's exactly what happened there. Nice job there for Poeta, earning the first two points of the match. The challenge for Poeta is going to be working, his stamina because One. he is very quick, but he's, as Good you job. mentioned, he's wrestling up a weight, so he there's, there's a reason they use weight classes in this sport, and that's because strength matters. So he got that first quick shot, finished it nice, pulled that foot out, Nice single leg there, working it hard. Limps the arm out, finishes it with the two. Real nice job using his speed and his technique. We'll earn two points. They go out of the boundary lines and we'll come back to the neutral position in the center. You know, I say that there's a little bit of concern about Poeta's stamina simply because he's wrestling up a weight. However, I must say that he wrestled a really tough match in the semifinals and beat the number one seed here, by a point. And his stamina held up in that match. So while that's a concern, he got through it in the semifinals, and likewise, Bama, seated third, beat the number two seed in the semifinals by a point. So both these guys came off good, hard wins by a point. Yeah, and that number two seed that you're talking about, Jared Prayer, also the NCAA champion. So that was a big win, no question for Bama. Yeah, both of these wrestlers have exceeded their expectations already, or at least the expectations of the seeding committee for this tournament, but not by much, because they were seeded third and fourth. Poeta is a redshirt freshman. He sat out last year, his first year at University of Illinois, so this is his first competitive season. And two years ago, coming out of high school, he was one of the top recruits in the country. Okay, we're deferring. His skill this level way, uh, and his quickness way. is this just way. outstanding. Okay, man. Like Scores I say, the, the only rub right Second now period. is he's got to wrestle set. up a weight Cover. because he's got a defending, or he's got a teammate, a weight below, who's been an NCAA champ and a several-time All-American. Once again, Mike Poeta in the blue singlet for Illinois and the One. black singlet for Northern Iowa, Nick Bama. Okay, Bama did a good job starting the second period off with an escape there to tie this out, but at some point, Bama is going to have to score a takedown because Poeta gets his choice in the third period. He's doing a good job. He's coming after Poeta, and, and he's doing what he had hoped to start out with, and that is controlling him a little bit. Poeta got that first takedown in the first period with this quickness, but Bama's doing a pretty good job of controlling that ahead and trying to control that that the hands. On there. Here. And you would think that Bama would be a taste stronger yeah, as well. He's used to wrestling in this 165 pound class versus, of course, Poeta, who typically wrestles in the 157. He does look he does look just a little bit bigger and stronger, but uh, so far, oh boy. <laughs> wow. Oh, just as we're saying that, Poeta explodes with that Keep quickness working. of his. Keep that working, was a beautiful. He had, he had his right arm on an underhook and took it down to that left knee oh. or that far knee Freeze or far down. ankle and just drove the shoulder right over it. Here we have, he's got that right underhook, takes it right over that far shin. Beautiful, what a beautiful shot. That quickness is terrific. And when you make that commitment, you have to do it with everything you have. Yeah, you don't want to do, you don't want to do that shot halfway, that's for sure. Well, Bain has got to come up with some answers here and escape to start off would help, but he's gonna have to find a way to what? score a takedown or this match is what? over. Oh, yeah. Nice little slap in the face or a little pushover. Just let him know he loves him. Oh, that was a love He's tap. <laughs> Break on my that wasn't even nasty. That was that was just a, a, a little one. Well, Bame has done a good job of pressing the action, but I haven't seen a real clean, hard shot out of him yet. He's 
He's starting to run out of time here with 30 seconds left in the second period. Once again, just about 20 seconds left here in our second of three periods. We are in the 165-pound weight class, number three and number four seeds doing battle here. And it's been a great match so far, a lot of action. Yeah, it's interesting. Both of these are Illinois high school kids. Poeta, of course, from Highland Park, as you mentioned earlier, and uh, Bama grew up in the western suburbs. He had a great high school career there before heading off to northern Iowa, and he's a junior now. He's definitely gotten bigger and stronger, as you would expect. But right now, he's got a battle. He's got an uphill battle on his hands. Another look here, courtesy of American Airlines. There's one of the escapes Bama needed to keep it close. Now he needs a takedown. And that was that little love tap you were talking about a little bit earlier. <laughs> Black, yeah, it's pretty interesting when you think What's about these question? two guys actually were on the same uh, team together three, competing in their younger Illinois, years on period. youth all-star teams growing up Cover. in Illinois. Third period, the final two minutes have begun. Well, Bayman may as well try to score some back points yeah, man, here, but at some again. point he's going to have to cut them loose and start going after some takedowns. And the ref blows the whistle, stops the action here. That cover top. That is Bayman that is on top. Well, I think Bayman can take a little bit he of time here, here to see working. if he can get uh, some back points on Poeta, but if he can, he's going to have to cut them loose because that's the only way he's going to get this match tied up. What's he looking for here, Mark? Well, he's down by a point right now, and he's just looking for anything back points-wise. He's he looking for on. cradles. He's looking to catch that far arm under the crotch. He, right now, he, he'd be looking for a bar half with those legs in. But he can only take so much time to do this. Oh, Ooh. nice cross face. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit more than a love tap. <laughs> it was on the side of the face, though, so it was legal. But he's right about now, usually at about the one-minute mark. Again. If you're not turning that guy, you're going to cut him loose let's go. Fight and, set. Let's go. Set and take your chances. He's a point Optional down. Start, if he cuts him loose, he'll be on, two go. points Optional. down, then he needs Cover. to take down to tie it up. There it is. That's the optional One. start where you just put your hands on the back because you're pretty much going to just push the guy away. That does give him, oh, what a shot, what a shot. That's as deep, that's as, deep as he's been in all night. Two. And he finishes it. That is exactly what he had to do. He cut him loose for the escape, which put Poet up by two, and Bama got the takedown to tie it up. Now, the tricky part here is Bama's got to ride him for the last 40 seconds of the match to get it into overtime. I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Right, stay right. Let's go again. Right down. So the ref will on, stop go, the action here as they go out of the boundary lines. We'll take another look at this, Mark. Great nice, shot. Nice deep shot into that, into the over to the left. He collects it in. He uses that power. Switches to the double right there and finishes it off. Beautiful shot. And as you mentioned, still has his work Cover. cut out for him here. We'll have to hold him down for the better part of 40 seconds. Just a one-point escape, and he'll take the lead once again. It would go back to Mike Poeta. Well, once one-point escape might be easier said than done right now. bama has got those legs in, and he's cranking hard with it. He's not content to ride. He's looking for some back points. Well, I would think that's really what you need to do here. I mean, be aggressive. Try to win this thing. Keep him down on the bottom as well. If you let up a little bit, he pops up, gets that escape point, it's over. Well, the nice thing about being aggressive with the legs is you can be aggressive for back points and still keep the pressure on, which eliminates the opportunity for a, a, an escape. Right. So One here minute. we are. We're going OT. All right, let's go. Hop up. So both guys working extremely hard right, here at the end of regulation time. Here we go. Five to five, Mike Poeta and Nick Bama. Okay, we saw two great shots by Poeta earlier in the bout that got takedowns. Got a terrific shot by Bama in that third period. We'll see who has the energy or the stamina here. It looks like Bama's picking up the pace here a little bit, too. Yeah, I, we're starting to see a little bit of the differential in terms of the weight class. Poeta, Poeta should be a weight class down, but hey, right now, this is the weight class he's wrestling at. The, the other Russell aspect here, of it here. is, yeah, maybe Bama's a little bit bigger, oh, but be, because Poeta's not cutting any weight, he should have a little bit more energy to help offset a little bit the size difference. So, that being said, they get they get to decide on the mat, not me up here. And possibly just a taste quicker, but uh, these guys pretty even so far. The first minute of overtime here. 
Damn it. Let's the first again. point scored here would end the match. Yes, this is the one point overtime sudden victory where any score ends the match. If they don't score in the next 15 seconds, they will go into those two 30 Oh, boy. Oh, oh man. I don't know how poor to wrestling. escape that. Keep wrestling. He found some energy keep from wrestling. somewhere, somewhere to keep that takedown from happening. And you can see both of those guys, man, Three looking zero. for a little oxygen. What a counter. What a counter. Took a knee there. Looked like he was going to try to reach in for the shot and then goes for it. So Bama trying so hard. He gets so close right here, but just not able to capture those points. Seconds here now, okay? Full 30. Okay, now Set. we go to the 30-30. These 30-second periods will be wrestled Cover, the down next down. two in their entirety. Doesn't matter if someone scores. They will be wrestled completely. Keep Bama's got here. one Keep job here, down. and that is to not let Porter escape. Looks like he's got that cradle he, there. He does have the cradle lock, and you know what? If he can just hang on to that, he doesn't have to go anywhere. Keep they won't call here, somebody working. for stalling when they've got that cradle locked up. They might call stalemate, but they won't call somebody for stalling. So that's a per terrific place just to stay for the next five seconds and finish this period out. And it's tough Great because Poeta really down. can't go anywhere from there without Green being in danger down. of going to his back. So it's a tough. that was a tough position to be in for Poeta. And we'll start the second of two 30-second periods here in this first that. overtime segment. Okay, optional start, bottom man. Optional okay, Poeta is going to start with the optional start. He's going to cut him loose and hope for the takedown. Wow. wow. He's not even going to try to try to ride him out. That is an aggressive move right there. Well, I think Poeta may have decided, hey, I'm probably not going to ride him for 30 seconds, and I'm better off having the whole 30 to try for a takedown than just some portion of that 30. So he's got to get a shot off, but Bama is controlling his left hand like he talked about earlier. He's controlling that left hand, which, oh, what a nice duck. What a nice duck. Oh, this match, what a terrific match. This has come right down to the end. Neutral. Excellent bout from both guys. Mike Peretta trying so hard right there towards the end. It looked like he almost got it. He cut him loose for the one point, and that's the difference in the match. But that shot of his at the end was terrific. I have Northern Iowa's Nick Bama, 165-pound Midlands champion. Nick came in here halfway and unknown across the country. You beat the big, high-profile freshman. How does it feel to finally be a Midlands champ? Feels great. I've been, I've been coming to this event since I was a kid, watching other people wrestle, watching many champions, and now I'm one of them, so it feels great. Next up, the 174-pounders, and this man, the number one seed, Jake Herbert for Northwestern, will try to make North. We've had a lot of fun here at the 43rd Annual Midlands Wrestling Tournament held at Northwestern University. We are up to the 174-pound weight class. This certainly one that everybody from Northwestern will be watching very closely. All right, Jake, last year you sat up here and you were going to be the first Northwestern wrestler in a few decades to win a title here. Now you're looking at this repeat. Yeah, first Northwestern two-timer. Have you improved? Uh, I feel I've, yeah, I've improved. I've worked on a lot of weaknesses, got, you know, a lot bigger, a lot stronger. Um, and just basically, you know, a lot of mental preparation for it. You know, just like going out there, you got to be scoring points at all times. You got to be like addicted to scoring. So, what, what were those weaknesses? I can't tell you that. I don't want, I want people to know my weaknesses. <laughs> <laughs> we're good buddies. Uh, we're on the same uh, national teams, like dream team and Dapper Band team. And you know, we went on recruiting trips together. So, you know, he, he's a goofy kid, and you know, we get along well. And. Uh, it, 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 I'm excited to wrestle him, you know. Obviously, right now, I'm not too excited about the performance I just put out. But, um, you know, I know I'm going to have to wrestle a lot, lot better tonight if I want to win that match. And Mark John hey Fuller at the top of the Sit show down. touched on this. It would be the first Northwestern wrestler to ever win two Midlands titles here. Of course, a very tough competitor. Earned the first one for Northwestern since 1974. But this is the match everybody wanted to see when they heard Mark Perry was going to step up to the 174-pound weight class. Yes, this is a compelling matchup because here you have two of the top sophomores in the country. They were both All-Americans last year as freshmen. 
at two different weight classes. The weight below, Perry was second. He was NCAA runner-up as a freshman. And the next weight up, this weight, 174, Herbert was third in the nation. He lost an early match and then came all the way back to third place. So these are two really talented sophomores, and seeing them in the weight class going at each other, it's just fun. It's a great matchup. Uh, Herbert, uh, oh boy, I tell you what, Herbert, uh, he's got that arm in deeper than he would normally like, but he's doing, a, the, the, his right arm's trapped deeper than he would like, but that left arm is, is catching Perry, and he's hitting the corner. He's really close to two. Both wrestlers really working hard here. You see Herbert on top with the Northwestern singlet on. Trying to get that leg back around him, but just not able to do so yet. Yeah, Perry did a good job of fighting that off and getting to the edge. That was that was really very smart on his part. Perry, an NCAA runner-up in 05 at 165 pounds. Here's another look at it. And you can see those ties just kind of stalemating there, but they worked extremely hard. No points were awarded right there. Yeah, I think that both of these guys are being a little bit cautious right now, I, which I guess I don't blame them. I, I thought I might we might see more fireworks in this first period, but both of them are being a little bit cautious of overextending themselves, making a bad shot, because they're both good counter-wrestlers, so I think that's what we're seeing here. Probably have spent plenty of time on the mat practicing together as well, as we heard Mark Perry talk about it a little bit earlier. Oh, man. Boy, that's... Oh, that could be... Oh, <laughs> i tell you what, that could have been called two or uh, another two seconds and it could have been called two. That was very close, but they waved it off. And you can hear the displeasure of the crowd as well. I mean, right there, Jake Herbert was in a... Yeah, the pretty good the, position. The wrestling coach for Northwestern thinks it's two. Here it is. He, he's underneath there. Perry's keeping the crotch locked up, but Herbert's coming around. The hands are no longer locked. He's coming around. Boy, that, that looks a lot like two. However, we're watching it in slow motion, so it, that does uh, distort it a little bit. So we'll give the refs That's a break right. and just That's say right. it was a close call and ran out of time. Okay, go ahead. Second period here. Still zero to zero between two very, very tough wrestlers. Mark Perry, his uncle, John Smith. We talked about this a year ago. Coach for Oklahoma State. His dad was an assistant coach for Oklahoma State, which is Iowa's biggest rival. So needless to say, Perry certainly stirred up the family pot, if you will, when he decided to go to Iowa. Well, looks like he made his own decision, doesn't it? And has been very good at that, too, I might add. <laughs> well, he's got... I, I'm not quite sure what uh, Don't make I was going to say. It, the leg was in. It was hard to see, but uh, Perry's right leg was in, and I, I think uh, he's good from there, and Herbert was just being cautious not to get himself into an extended <laughs> or dangerous position. Okay. He's got that leg in now. Nothing, 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 nothing. Herbert's got to be careful nothing, here. Nothing, he's got to be careful no that he's point, not uh, no caught on his point. back for a, a few seconds. Oh, he's coming around. Herbert's coming around. He just needs to get that left arm across. Boy, what? These guys know where they're at on the mat. They are doing some real serious rolling around. Now, here we are, back kind of where we were we in the first period at the end. Um, that is two. All right, they did two. give the reversal to Herbert. They gave him the reversal, and Herbert's looking for some back points. Wow, both of these guys really know where they're at when they start rolling on the mat. They just have really good <coughs> mat sense and good balance. Jake Herbert, really a high-profile recruit coming in as he chose Northwestern over <coughs> Michigan and has lived up to the hype so far. As you mentioned before, just an uncanny mat presence there. Does an excellent job. And, of course, Mark Perry, a guy that's trained with the Russell! U.S. Olympic team. Yeah, these are two quality kids, and as we said earlier, they're both sophomores, so oh! we're, we've got... Two and a half more years of watching them wrestle. Uh, what a treat. Now, once again, they go out of the boundaries there, and they will come back to the center of the mat. About 10 to 15 seconds Hands left flat. in this second period. Hands flat down. Ready, Red? We're going to have Can another look red. here to replay. Mark, talk us through it. Yeah, this is that scrambling we we're talking about, and Herbert almost caught Perry on his back, but Perry did a good job not letting that happen, and 
they did, of course, give the two-point reversal. One second, okay? Hold it. Okay. Now you come down. And the ref talking to the timers here on the edge of the mat. You go down quickly, ref. Go. Okay, Perry One, wants it. Oh, two, man, what a, three, what a catch. What a four, catch. Perry's five. trying to get that escape before the end of the period, and Herbert caught him on his back while he was rolling through. Oh, man, that is huge. With less than 10 Whoa. seconds left, that is huge. Three, Instead of an escape three. point, Herbert gets the three-point near fall. Wow, I, I guarantee you, Jake Herbert was just begging for more time on the clock there. Here we go. He's trying to roll it through. He's, he's almost coming out, and Herbert somehow slides underneath. Man, that's, I don't know if he's ever practiced that or if he just felt it, but he sure slid underneath there at the right time. Okay, you're set. Get on, Herbert. Very Go. exciting. We will start our third period here, and Jake Herbert with a five-point lead. <clears throat> well, I don't think anybody saw that one coming. I think maybe they could have expected Herbert to finish riding him out or... or uh, perhaps see Perry scored an escape, but I don't think anybody saw a near fall coming on that scramble. These athletes have absolutely no quit in them. I guarantee you Mark Perry will come back as hard as he knows how. Yeah, there's no question about that. Whether it's to come back for a win or to come back and just make a good showing or, you know, I, neither one of these guys are going to quit. You're absolutely right. Okay, we're back to the center. And right now we have a 5-0 lead. This was, this was got, I tell you what, this has to be considered unexpected to have a 5-0 lead going into the third period for either one of these guys to be on 5 you know, just to take a look at Jake Herbert, he is a strong man, you can see that. Big, physically strong man, and looks sizably different than Mark Perry. You know, I think Jake looks about... Well, he doesn't look a weight class bigger, uh, but he does look a little bit bigger than... Perry. Now, Perry did come up away from last year, and I was told he lifted a lot over the summer and put on a lot of good muscle mass, but, you know, maybe Jake's uh, a fraction of a weight class bigger. Jockeying for position here as Jake Herbert with a Northwestern singlet on, trying to hold Mark Perry down on the mat. Well, this has been, up till now, a dominating performance on Herbert's part. Uh, he hasn't been at he hasn't been at risk at any point so far in the match, and he's been the one coming out with the points. And still not okay, even still an escape now, point stay yet still. for Mark Perry, stuck on the bottom Watch here, needs there. to get up and get going. And Herbert, could, I tell you what, Herbert okay, could be tough set. on Don't top you too. He's, you go, he's powerful. He knows where he's at in those scrambles. He knows how to tie things up. I wouldn't want to have to be trying to come back uh, on a five-point deficit with a minute to go. Mark Perry representing Iowa on the bottom. Stay in there, stay in there. Easy now. Oh! Okay, they're off the mat one more time and back to the center. Down. Don't budge. <laughs> the rep is being very specific with the instructions here you ready, so that it doesn't have to be given okay, out false start green. cautions go, and warnings. Go, Jake Herbert about to make history here with Northwestern as he is trying to win two championships, and it would be in back-to-back -back years. Yeah, what can you say? Here's a, here's a second-year wrestler who has yet to lose a, a, a match in the Midlands and win two t championships in two tournaments. Not much more you can say about that. But we're down to 15. The five-point lead would be almost a miracle to give up at this point. If there's any five-point moves in Perry's repertoire, now's the time for it. One. Takes a shot right there. Yeah, that was a couple oh. seconds left. Tell you what, that was a nice shot by on Perry's part, but it didn't really need any countering on Herbert's part. He just needed to make yeah. sure he didn't Thank accidentally you. do something silly and go to his back. Here's that last takedown for Perry. He got that head under there and started to duck around. We're back here once again for the 43rd Midlands Wrestling Tournament held here at Northwestern University. We are up to 184 pounds. Pete Friedel, representing Illinois, will do battle with Ben Whistle from Purdue. I've had a great uh, outcome so far this season. And since, I mean, we haven't practiced all week. This is 
probably the most is mental training, you know, my mental shape. A lot of uh, that third period's mental toughness, you know, so that's really what I'm getting tested at right now. Stay away, don't let them get, get a hold of me and beat me up too much. And, and pick my pick my shots and, and make them count. Stay set for me. A big Ready? match here, Mark. Stay Keith steady. Friedel with a Green, lot of pressure on his back. If he wins this match, Illinois will win the team Good championship job. here Red. at the Midlands. But it's not his first time being in this position. He was also in the same position for the Big Ten. And he was able to get it done. Here we are in the second period. Friedel got his escape, and that is the first points of the match. So Friedel's up one to nothing, and Whistle is chasing. We should also say that Friedel, two-time NCAA All-American, moved up in weight class in 05 from a 174-pound. Really an undersized guy for the class as well as Ben. Pete Friedel, who beat Jake Herbert for the Big Ten title in 05. We talked about it before. No stranger to pressure here. Very, very good under the gun. Ben Whistle also... Very tough competitor here, a senior, and is majoring in history. Yeah, last year, the weight below at 174, Friedel and Jake Herbert from Northwestern split, I believe, four matches. And as you mentioned, Friedel beat him in the last seconds of the Big Ten Finals, and then two weeks later, Herbert beat him in one of the All-American rounds. So he's moved up to 184 this year and he's wrestling a stud this guy is really physically put together whistle from Purdue they say he's a real big guy for the class very very strong and could probably even do well at 197 pounds if he were to want to step up you see how cut up he is well I don't I don't want to sell Friedel short because even though he's up a weight class this year he beat 10 to 4 in the semifinals he beat the number two seed by six points so you know he may he may look slightly undersized uh, especially compared to the final other finalists from purdue but he beat a he beat a really good wrestler in the semis so he knows how to he knows how to compete that's for sure and seated number three here so talking about a couple of guys that are seated very very close to each other what's happening here mark well we've got a replay of friedel's escape which is the only points on the board Bottom. right now so we start the third period with Friedel on top. Whistle is going to have to get his escape just to now. tie it up Come on, and Red. Go ahead. take it from there. Large men here. When you think about how lean these guys are and still making weight, 184 pounds, you were talking about a lot of very, very strong men. Yeah, I tell you, Whistle doesn't look like he's got any more than about 5 or 6% body fat on him. I mean, he's he's big and lean and strong. And, and uh, right now, you would expect that he would have the advantage over Friedel, you know, just size-wise, but Friedel's hanging in there. And that's the beauty of this sport. I mean, it's not always about the strength. No, it's about the knowledge of the game. That's right. There's, there's so many different aspects that go into this in terms of technique, quickness, experience, savvy, Blood. size. I mean, it all comes into play. Blood. And the interesting thing is it changes from one match to the next because it's not just how big, quick, or experienced you are, but how you match up against the particular style of the guy on the other side of the circle. And boy, I'll tell you right there, no question, Ben Whistle just exploded up off the bottom. Pete Friedel tried to hold him down there, was working very, very hard, but eventually it would be Ben who gets the escape point right here. Ready? Okay, let's go. Both up. Okay, we had a little bit of an injury timeout to wipe some blood off, and here we are, back Ready. in the third period. It's one-to-one. -one. We've got a minute 20 for one of these guys to get a takedown. Big men are moving extremely quick here, looking for any opportunity possible. Okay, these guys are going to have to open up a little bit. Oh, boy, that was a... <laughs> Whistle is really coming after him. Ben, I don't know. Oh, oh, I that just oh boy that wow. I How hate, does a knee do that? I hate to see that. And and the fact is, Friedel put himself in that position, so he obviously knows that knows that his knee bends that way. But gosh, <laughs> for the average Joe to be looking at that, it just looks awful. Either he has no medial collateral ligaments, 
or they're just really flexible. And Ben just seemed to be fearless when he took that shot. I mean, he just haphazardly went right on in. That is, by the way, the extent of my medical knowledge. I, I can't, I don't know any <laughs> other, I don't know any other anatomical Quiet terms, but boy, Whistle, whistle is really pressing the action now. He sure looks like he wants to get this done before, uh, before overtime comes up. Friedel's just doing everything he can to withstand the onslaught here by this powerful guy from Purdue. The two big men going at it here, and Ben really working hard trying oh, to that get was a takedown and a, a nice counter right there out of Friedel. That was a real nice counter and shot by Friedel's part because if he waits any longer to take a shot, he's going to get hit for stalling. He's been warned. That was real smart of him to take that shot so that he doesn't get a point levied against him. Just a oh. couple of seconds left here. Okay, we're going to see who's in shape here. We've got a full Red, match, and we're into, their, feet. we're into the one-minute overtime period that is sudden, sudden victory. Any point scored, scores, wins the match at this point. And you can see Ben just doesn't appear to be tired whatsoever. No, he still looks, he still looks pretty fresh. Friedel looks tentative. We'll see what he's got left. Friedel in the blue singlet. Ben in the black. And Ben just trying his hardest to get down in deep. Deep. Oh, oh man. man. I, oh, wow. That was that was so close to being a takedown. All, all Whistle had to do was control both ankles. And you can see Ben, you talked about it before, keeping one point inside the mat and was doing his best to keep that toe in. He, he, he presses that arm by right there. Oh, he had the left foot and the right toe, and, and Friedel yanked that right toe out Center. just at the last second. That was as close to two as you can get without having it. Boy, that was just a real smart job no. on Friedel's part to yank that right foot free. No. Boy, a couple of times there, Ben has been very, very close. Friedel able to use the outside ring of the mat to his advantage. Friedel's, Friedel's used every bit of his mat savvy that, that he's got in this match. And now Friedel in deep. Boy, that's not very... Oh, what a... Oh, he was in terrible position and turned it around with a beautiful duck under. He was in terrible position for, uh, for about two or three seconds there and then just he dropped, the, he dropped the hips, ducked that head to the far side and came around. What a beautiful finish. Boy, how quickly it happens, and Ben, who had worked so hard. Here he's caught in terrible position. He lowers the hips, pops that head up. Wow, what a time to hit a great finish to win a Midlands championship. We talked about it earlier. Whistle, he's a bigger guy than you are. He came out there, and he showed that power. He showed that strength, even through the overtime. How are you able to take away his offensive attacks there in the end. Well, I don't think, uh, he was in on me a couple times. I don't know how effective I was at taking away his offense, but uh, but I outlasted him, and I got him. I got him on a slick move. Kind of helped that we were all slippery. You know, I'll take it if I, when I get it. And Arena is where all the action is happening here with the 43rd Midlands Wrestling Tournament held here at Northwestern University. Once again, Ken Stout with you, Mark Masry, John Fuller down at Mad Side covering action for us we'll go into our 197 pound class um, tonight I expect to go out and wrestle my match um, Trevor's a very good wrestler uh, he's one of my better friends around the country now I went to a leadership conference with him he's a great guy um, but I I want to wrestle the best I can I want to score bonus points if I can I just want to go out and get the win and wrestle my match I'd say the biggest thing is I've, I've cut loose uh, years previous, you know, I've, I've had successful years, I guess you could say, but not necessarily successful for myself because um, I was holding back and really didn't enjoy uh, wrestling and competition as much because I wasn't having fun with it. And I'd say this year, the thing that's got me there is just relaxing, having fun, trying different things, just wrestling. And I mean, that's the main thing for me, and uh, I think it has a lot to do with where I'm at right now. Good luck, good luck to you guys. Here, Here we, we go. go. Wynn McCulloch, seated number one, representing Central Michigan 
is also currently ranked number one in the country. Pretty rare for a sophomore who was not recruited out of high school, so he's had to work for his reputation. They get to it right off the bat. But what I love about Tyrone Bird, number three seed, his favorite all-time okay? athlete, a guy you know very time. well, you Joe okay? Williams. Well, you've come to okay. the right place if you want to pattern yourself after Joe Williams because he's won about 10 or 11 titles. So this is, this is as good a place to pattern yourself after Williams as any. The two big guys hooked up here. Tyrone Bird representing Illinois in the blue singlet. And, of course, Central Michigan in the maroon. Yeah, Michaela came in seated number one, so he's he's right where he belongs in this finals. And Bird had an upset win over the Northwestern wrestler in the semifinals. Uh, the Northwestern wrestler had been ranked second or seated second in this tournament. Bird seated third, so that was a good win for him. Michaela also very talented in the football arena as well. He was an All-State quarterback in high school. Comes from a very athletic family. His dad ran track at Central Mi Michigan. His mother, Karen, competed in field hockey, basketball, and track at Central Michigan. And for her efforts, she's been placed in the Central Michigan Hall of Fame. So imagine the uh, the controversy at the Thanksgiving table the is between mom now. and dad who he got his jeans from. <laughs> yeah, and what sport should he be pursuing? <laughs> I don't know what the quarterback situation is at Central Michigan, but uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a heck of an athlete. Check. Well, this, this final has lost its importance to the team race. It's kind of interesting. The team race could have come down to this match, except for the upset win at 184 by the Illinois wrestler. That put the team match away because up until then, Central Michigan and Illinois were neck and neck in a surprisingly tight team race. If the 84-pounder from Illinois doesn't score that upset win in the overtime, then this match has team implications. But right now, it's just for the individual championship. And to me, Mark, this is one of the beauties of the sport of wrestling. Certainly teamwork is always important, and you want to help your team do its best. But when you get out here to wrestle, there's no team here to help you. It's all you. Yeah, there's no place to hide. There's no place to say, hey, the, uh, you know, it was my teammate or somebody didn't do their other job. Boy, that was a fine shot by Bird, but you could see their feet went out of bounds. Heck of a shot on his part, though. Truly an individual effort here. As you get out here on the mat, we will start our second period here. Two more minutes back up on the clock. First period went scoreless. Just had that one uh, real close out-of-bounds call. Uh, that didn't stay in for Bird, so right now we're still scoreless. Okay, Bird decides he's going to cut him loose. He's, he's not going to risk getting uh, warned for stalling by not taking him back down to the mat. Just cuts him loose, sees what happens on his feet. See if he can uh, get a, re a reprisal of the powerful shot he had in the first period. Without question, the biggest match of Tyrone's <laughs> career while he's qualified Action. at the NCAAs. He's never made it past the first round he's actually qualified three times but never made it past the first round so to be in the final round here the final bout for the championship in the midlands is without question his largest match yeah this could be a boy that was a nice deep shot that was a real nice shot we'll see what kind of defensive capabilities michaela has here Well, you just kind of feel like the longer you stand there with it, the less likelihood you have of finishing. It doesn't really work that way. It just seems to work that way. If I'm Michaelic, I'm ripping up on that wrist, though. He's got, he's got a hold, he's got a hold of Bird's front Action. wrist. If he just rips it out Action. of there, his leg's going to come free. But he seems to be content to just kind of wait that out. Break it. Okay. Neutral. Here we go. Set. The ref breaks that stalemate position, and we go at it again. Well, so far, Bird's really been pressing the action on the feet. Michaelic's been a, a good, tough counter wrestler, but I, I, we haven't seen too much in the way of shots out of him yet. And we see some wrestlers that are typically that way. That's their style. They're a better counter than they are an aggressive. Well, with five seconds left, it looks like we're going to go into the third period with Michaelic a uh, one-to-nothing lead. And normally, oh, here's the... Here's that shot where he got in very deep, but Michaela, he's a little bit longer, and he just, he did a heck of a job keeping his balance, keeping that front wrist controlled. 
Okay, Bird needs to escape for his one point to tie this match up. The start of the third period, the final two minutes of the match, and as you mentioned before, Bird on the bottom here needs to get up and get that one point to tie this thing up. Well, Mikhailik, um, been proven. Mikhailik trying to get that cradle there. Uh, he's, he's, he's got the, the near leg hooked. He's trying to cradle the far side. I, I, I don't know if he's using, if he's going to be using legs. Right now, action. he appears just to be content to kind of control this from action from up there. And like we've seen in a couple of other instances, a tall individual probably used to getting that cradle on a number of people, catching them by surprise with the length of his arms. Well, right now, it looks like Bird's in a position that he's not either familiar with or not comfortable with. Because he's he's not coming up at all, and it almost looks New like start, he's guys. afraid of being Please cradled stop. or being turned. So maybe a fresh start here will, will be what Bird needs. Right now, go, he looks very tentative underneath. Set. With time running out, it's just one point, but that's all it takes here since the final period. Just tell him. Of course, if you've got somebody that, that cradles tough them on top, that has a way of making you look tentative. Boy, he, Bird did exactly what he needed to do. He, he really exploded up quickly to his feet, but Michaelic did a heck of a job taking him back down. That explosion is exactly what he needs so that he's not worried about getting the leg hooked and, and uh, far side cradled. Here we go. And 40 Action. seconds left in this final period. Can Michaelic hold on to a one-point lead? Well, I certainly wouldn't have thought so at the at the beginning of this period, but but once he settled Bird back Action. down to the mat, Bird looks very tentative. I, I think he's really nervous of that cradle. He needs to just grab a hold of uh, the. He needs to control the fingers. Well, there's that cradle he was worried about. There, it's exactly what he was worried about. He needs to do a. Well, I tell you what, Michaelic's going to control this match. Wow. Bird had his one shot at explosion, and Michaelic had his one shot at cradle, and uh, now I see why Bird was nervous under there. Right. And that'll do it. One to nothing will be the final That's score, it, guys. and your number one Clint seed, when Michaelic will get the win. Fine job Great keeping game, Bird guys. under control there on those one or two times he did come up. There's that cradle that almost scored a point for back points and almost wound up in an escape or reversal for Bird, but Michaelic stayed in control for the win. This is your first event now. Only a sophomore is the top-ranked wrestler in the country. Did you feel any different pressure out there on the mat? Did it feel any different? Um, I felt like some eyes were on me this time, more so than they were, have been, but uh, no, I just got to go out and wrestle my match. The final match is on tap here with the 43rd running of the Midlands Wrestling Tournament held here at Northwestern University. It's the big men, the weight class, 85 pounds. Matt Fields, the number four seed against Les Sigmund, the number two seed. Oh, what I haven't done is I've been sweeping through matches, and that's really not what I want to get through matches like, like this last match. I went to overtime, and that's not how I want to win. It's not how champions win, so I need to get past that kind of match and just go out and, you know, push the pace, and I haven't been doing that. Well, um, anytime I go up against D1 guys, I just enjoy the, enjoy the competition, just be able to compete with them, you know. That was one thing when I decided to say, you know, for sure, like Coach Jenny, you know, said we can go to these big tournaments like this. And, you know, it's just great to do this for my program. Les Sigmund representing Nebraska, Omaha, and you heard him talk about anytime he could go up against the D1 guys. Comes out of Division II. He's a three-time Division II champ. A lot of people always believed he could be a top Division I wrestler as well, and it's very rare for a Division II wrestler to come into the Midlands and do this well, but obviously proving that some people, what they believe, is correct. I tell you what, what's really interesting about watching Sigmund is he is quick. I mean, he is by he's definitely not the biggest heavyweight in this tournament by a, a stretch. I would say most of the guys okay, he's okay. wrestled are probably bigger than him, but he's big enough, and he is really quick. He uses some leg shots that I don't think any of these heavyweights have seen. That was a side note. He's a big fishing fan. He wants to be on the Bass Masters Tour, of all things, for the big man, so... Oh, that was nice. He, he pulled that forearm up out of the way and went down there. I tell you what, you just don't see shots like that by heavyweights. That was that was excellent technique. Excellent job. Matt Fields representing Iowa.
just recovering from an injury, if I'm not mistaken, I believe he had a knee injury. He was also an NCAA tournament qualifier in 05. I tell you what Sigmund reminds me of is, he reminds me of somebody who had been a smaller wrestler earlier in his career and learned the techniques of smaller guys and then grew into being a heavyweight. Uh, you know, a lot of your heavyweights are big even when they're little. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> every <laughs> once in a while you get a heavyweight who wasn't big when he was little and learns a different style of wrestling, and that, that's, what, that's what Sigmund looks like to me. Kind of an interesting behind-the-scenes story here with Matt Fields. When Matt was recruited to Iowa, Steve Mako, former Midlands champion, left Iowa and went to Oklahoma State, Iowa's biggest rival. So a little controversy underlying there whenever Matt Fields came into Iowa. But Matt is a sophomore doing a great job here. Yeah, he got pressed into service last year as a freshman, and I don't think he was expecting that. But then, you, like you say, you had to, to transfer there. I don't know what that was all about. Um, Mako had already been doing one in green, one in green, a terrific one in job green. at Iowa and, and don't know what was going on in his head that uh, said, I got to go to Oklahoma State. But that's where he's at, and that opened up the slot for Fields to wrestle last year. Fields doing a great job coming in here. Number four makes his way Spirit, to the championship round. Yeah, when you go Red's through choice. back through Red these brackets at heavyweight, there's been a lot of close bouts. Green this heavyweight neutral. brackets probably hey as tightly packed as we've seen Second it in period. recent years. Uh, normally, you, you see a lot of pins and a lot of big wins, but you look through these brackets, there's been a lot of tight bouts. Just to help you keep them straight, Les Sigmund is wearing the singlet with the UNO on the back of it, representing, of course, University of Nebraska, Omaha. And to your right now, as you watch the competitors, that is the Iowa wrestler, Matt Fields. Yeah, Fields had a terrific win in the semifinals. He had a two-to-one victory over the number one seed, Ogunwale, from Harvard. Yeah, it, and yeah. that kid from Harvard, the heavyweight, is a really good athlete. So that was a terrific win for Fields in the semis. And there's another takedown for Sigmund. I tell you what, his his body position and his quickness is just outstanding. Action, guys, action, action, wrestling, all time. Very important match here. Personal match, I should say, for Sigmund. Would love to come into this event and go out of here with a championship. I know, I know. Yeah, it's neat for a, a Division II wrestler. This is, he doesn't get to wrestle in a Division I championship. So these kinds of tournaments is where he gets his shot at the, at the D1 level guys. We got one in green. The big men working hard here. It'd be interesting to know how much Sigmund weighs because there's a there's a weight class internationally that's uh, that might be right for him. Yeah, while the weight is at 285 pounds, obviously these guys not quite that large. What do you think? One more? Just leave it. But don't mistake it. These are some big men. They might not look like okay. it here because you have nothing to compare them to, yeah. but these are some large men. Okay. Thanks. On the bottom there, Matt Fields not able to push up and get up. Well, here we got a, you know, we've got a heavyweight using, Sigmund's using legs on top. He's, he's using, You're down green. he's using lightweight shots. I mean, this has really been interesting to watch. And Fields a good heavyweight, he's a good athlete, and Sigmund okay. is just doing what he wants so Green far. Physique-wise, if you were to look at the two, you would think Matt Fields would come out of here and win, but that's what we were talking about before. It's not all about physique and strength and how you look. It's about the savvy of the game, and obviously, Les Sigmund very good Red at it. Down. Okay, here's that last takedown. He dropped down to the leg and hit the corner, which is important. You don't want to stay underneath the big guys. And this is the start of our third and final period for the 285-pound weight class. One red escape. Okay, the Iowa wrestler lets him go because he's got to start getting some points. So he lets him go, and now he's going to be looking. If he's got any takedowns that, that takes the opponent to the back, he's going to have to start looking for that because six points is a lot of points to make up in two minutes. So if he's got any uh, if he's got any throws, this is a good time for him. I mean, Sigmund has put on an impressive performance in this tournament. He's had a fall. He's had a 10 to 1 win. He's had another fall. He's had a 17 to 1 win, and here he is up six to nothing in the finals. I mean, he has put on a dominating display. 
You had you had the littlest guy at 125 winning a championship without giving up a point, and here you are at heavyweight with almost the same kind of uh, tournament. Great effort, and again, uh, you, you, you spoke about it before, Mark, and you see the quickness of the big man. Yeah, he's, uh, Fields, Fields does not have an answer for it. He keeps pretty good body position, and when he does go, he's going quick. And Fields just doesn't have an answer for that quickness. And of course, by this time, they're both sweaty. I tell you what, it, it, you know, it, when, you're, when you're down six zip in a third period at a heavyweight match, that, that's, that's pretty tough. You've got to you've got to have a throw, and so far to be able to come from that far of a deficit, and it doesn't look like Fields has a throw. It looks like he's a, a takedown kind of guy, not a not a throw to the back kind of guy. Just another quick shot there. Sigmund looking for two more. Fields did a nice job countering that. Boy, he's oh, look at that. You just don't see heavyweights hitting those low shin shots and coming up with it. You just don't see that. What a what a dominating display, not only in this match, but for the whole tournament by this heavyweight from North Nebraska, Omaha. And that will wind up the match in the 285-pound class. Right, Congratulations to Division Great II job, wrestler Les job. Sigmund, number two seed, comes out here and just Excellent. dominates this Midlands event. Ankle band, please. Shake hands. Obviously, Over right there, Matt Fields not too impressed with the effort. Here's that last takedown, catches the ankle, shoulder at the knee, just drives him over. Little guy shot by the big guy. What do you think this tells people around the country, not only about you and the Nebraska Omaha program, but also about Division II wrestlers in general? Well, you don't have to be at D1 to be tough, you know, just, you know, there's, at all levels, there's tough guys.